Why are so many people fascinated by the Euphrates River? Well, in this video, we'll take a deep dive into this historical landmark and look for its significance in the Bible and in end-time prophecy. Because the Euphrates River is mentioned in the first book of the Bible and also in the last book of the Bible, and if you understand Bible prophecy, you will know why this river is so important. In Genesis 2, the Euphrates River is highlighted as one of the rivers that flowed out of the Garden of Eden. In Deuteronomy 1, God told Moses and the children of Israel to go and possess the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. In the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, the Word of God reveals that there is something sinister being held at the bottom of the Euphrates River and it will set the stage for Armageddon. But before we get into that, let me tell you about a significant event that happened. Historians believe that the city of Babylon was located about 50 miles south of Baghdad along the Euphrates River. In the Old Testament, we're told the story of the Tower of Babel at a time when all mankind spoke a single language. They said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Bible tells us that when God saw this, He destroyed the tower and scattered mankind across the earth, making them speak many languages. So you see, the Euphrates River has been an essential landmark for biblical history. But what about the future? What does the future hold for the Euphrates River? Well, in the book of Revelation, on the sixth trumpet judgment of God, the Bible tells us that a solitary voice from the four horns of the golden altar which stands before God told an angel of God to release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. A few noteworthy points, God has kept these four fallen angels bound for a very specific time in human history. They are to be released only for a specific mission of destruction. But why are these four so unique in the sense that there is only one other creature who is bound at the bottomless pit for a thousand years, and this is the devil? but this happens later on in Revelation 20. But it highlights the severity of these fallen angels. These four angels in the Euphrates are in a separate category to other fallen angels because here is what the Bible tells us about the location of other fallen angels. 2 Peter 2 verse 4 says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. So the other fallen angels who rebelled in heaven were cast down to hell and right now they are in chains awaiting judgment. But what is it about the four angels bound in Euphrates? Why are they kept only for the tribulation, and other fallen angels aren't? Well, some have suggested that these angels are the actual representation of what the devil came on this earth to do, to kill, steal, and destroy. Hence why they will only be released at the very end of time. Now, before I go any further, you have to understand that these four satanic angels are like nothing this world has ever seen. Imagine just how bad these evil angels are for God to have them bound at the bottom of the Euphrates River. The sole purpose of these fallen angels is to slay a third of the earth's population. Some Bible commentators speculate that these angels might have been high-ranking angels who were cast out of heaven with Lucifer. The Bible tells us that when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, a third of angels fell with him. We aren't given the details about what type of angels were thrown from heaven, but some scholars speculate that there may have been some other high-ranking principal angels included. And this argument comes from the fact that these four angels were so powerful that God decided to keep them bound until the tribulation period. And when they were released they led an army of 200 million horsemen. Now what we don't know is that when they lead an army of 200 million horsemen, are these real horses with real riders? Is this symbolic of a supernatural demonic army, or is this a modern army? Some Christian commentators offer further arguments that suggest that these four angels at the bottom of the Euphrates are high-ranking fallen angels because of what we're told in Ephesians 6 verse 12. The Bible reads, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. From this description, here's what we can interpret, the devil has a kingdom. The kingdom of darkness. In this kingdom, there is a structure, there are descending orders of authority which are principalities or principal spirits, there are evil rulers of darkness, and then spiritual hosts of wickedness, meaning evil spirits. Now some may say, well this is all just interpretation, the Bible doesn't clearly go into this. Well, if you go back in time and go to the Old Testament, there was a time when Daniel was seeking the face of God in prayer because he wanted a revelation from God about the future. After three weeks of intense prayer and fasting, an angel from God appeared to Daniel. And here is what the angel said, here's where we get a strong clue about evil principal spirits. Daniel 10 verse 12 and 13 says, Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. But for twenty-one days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So from the very first day that Daniel started praying, God sent an angel to provide him with an answer, but the angel was delayed for three weeks, and it was not delayed by a demon, it wasn't delayed by an evil spirit. God's angel was delayed by a principality, a chief principal evil spirit which was so strong that Michael, the archangel of God, came to help and fight this principality. So you see, it is a valid interpretation to view the angels that are bound at the bottom of the Euphrates as high-ranking principal angels who were perhaps angels of war or aggressively evil when they rebelled alongside Lucifer in heaven. We don't know, but whatever the case may be, the Bible does not give us further information about these angels, apart from the fact that when they are released, they have the power to kill a third of mankind. Now the second time the river is brought up in the book of Revelation is in chapter 16, when the seven bold judgments are poured out on the earth. Revelation 16 verses 12 to 14 says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out to the king of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. From this passage of Scripture, we're told that this iconic river dries up. Now you may have noticed that over the past twelve months, the Euphrates River has been in the media a lot more. Al Jazeera reports of a declining flow of the Euphrates River from neighboring SE Syria. Premier Christianity magazine published an article titled, The Euphrates River is Drying Up, but don't get too excited about end times prophecies, and goes on to say, the environmental crisis is more general and surely a foreshadowing of the end of days. In addition to this, several studies have reported that the river's water flow has decreased by more than 6% over the past century, due to dams and irrigation projects in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. Although these headlines have attracted a lot of attention, and despite some people saying the end has begun, I believe the prophecy in Revelation 16 concerning the drying up of the Great River will be a far more significant event. It's striking that the Bible says the river dries up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. What does this mean? One of the key events leading up to Armageddon is the drying up of the Euphrates. When this river dries up, it provides a path for a great army from the east to cross the Euphrates easily as they make their way to the valley of Armageddon. Now Armageddon can only be described as the war of all wars. The Antichrist will gather all of the people under his evil influence. These people who are loyal to the Antichrist will form their armies to wage war against the people of God. In this battle, Revelation 19 tells us things like, then I saw heaven opened and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. 
The armies of heaven dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on white horses. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. You see, Jesus Christ will lead a heavenly army to victory over God's enemies. These enemies include those who oppose God's authority and who treat God with contempt.